the next candidate that we heard about, Nick Cayley. Now, it was reported by Mike Reese that he seems like he's going to end up being the favorite to get the Patriots offensive coordinator job. We've also seen guys like Josh McDaniels link. They haven't had an interview with him yet, but the name's been floated around. I know Jeff Howe mentioned on your podcast last week that Josh McDaniels is somebody who could shoot up potentially, but Nick Haley's the first guy on the offensive coordinator circuit who's actually come in for a second interview. So he's kind of a guy I feel like people don't know a ton about because, you know, tight ends coaches, they don't get a lot of credit, but there's a pattern where a lot of the offensive coordinators the Patriots have brought in are guys with tight ends experience. So what do you think about Kaylee as a candidate? Is he someone that excites you? Do you not really like the idea of bringing in someone who already has such close ties? And also, do you think that him, you know, basically going on sabbatical with the Rams was enough time for him to be able to bring a lot of the things from the McVay system that people really want to see them integrate and kind of give them a blend of old and new? Yeah, so there's a lot there. Uh, but I want to start back at the last question, too, because something just hit me as far as we talk about titles, right? And some people think they're important like others don't when they're built. It's interesting to me that the titles were really the genesis of Gerard's career here, where they created a position for him as inside linebackers coach in 2019, not a job that had been filled in the years prior, just to get him on staff. And back in those days, it wasn't just Gerard coming in to plug a hole in the defensive staff. But as you mentioned, cornerbacks and safeties meeting together, that changed that offseason. Because it was Mike Pellegrino, a very young uh, corners coach, was meeting with Steve Belichick, who then was coaching the safeties. So they did have different positions, but they were all in the same room at the same time, coaching the same things. And so whoever you want to slice it up, it's just interesting that, you know, sometimes they don't matter. That's how Gerard got in the door in the first place, creating a whole job for him as the fastest rising assistant ever under Belichick. And now if you want to expand the staff, just go a step further to pull these guys in. And even though they might be doing the same things as a traditional defensive backs coach, like this is a, a tool that can be used in the hiring process for a job that might not seem uh, as appealing as it once was under the greatest coach of all time and with the greatest quarterback of all time in-house. That being said, Nick Haley, um, he and I actually have a, a I don't want to say a connection. It's, it's, it's a little looser than that, but I covered Joe Moorhead, who was the offensive coordinator at Penn State when he was there in 2016, 2017. Great years for Penn State. They had Saquon Barkley. They had Mike Kosicki. They had Chris Godwin. They had me on the beat. And Joe Moorhead was one of the Power first to hire. Yeah. Uh, Nick Cayley, when he was a low-level assistant at Akron, where Joe Moorhead has since gone back and been the head coach. And so I reached out to Joe after coming here and said, hey, you know, I, I know this guy used to work under you. What do you think? Asked Nick vice versa. It was a flower bouquet tossing both ways. So Nick, for people who work with him back when he first got into coaching or players I've since talked to who worked under him or guys on staff that I've spoken to about him, all say the same few things. He's exceptionally hardworking. He's bright. And he's understanding. So he doesn't come from the old school of just going to Bray, you're going to do this and this is why. I think the question is, as good as he's been as a tight ends coach, and I do think the experience under McVay is valuable. Now, one year is very different. Like, say, your freshman year in college versus when you leave, you know, as a, uh, you know, a senior to installing a new system. I don't think he could do that with all the minutia. But a coordinator job, just like when you go from coordinator to head coach, head coach is much more administrative. I, I make the analogy all the time. That's the principle of the school. You're doing the hiring, mm -hmm. the organizing, the vision setting. Okay, you're not making the lesson plans and doing the teaching day to day like a teacher would. But when you're a teacher, it's different than being kind of like the TA where you can do some of the grading or the research or a little bit of the lesson plans. But you don't have to be there at the front of the room saying, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. Oh, and if you don't do what I say, I get to hand down the discipline. So my question is about Nick, clearly a very good TA in this kind of position coach world. When you need to go to the front of the room, you need to handle quarterbacks. You need to handle the whole entire offense and things don't go so well. We just don't know because he's never coached quarterbacks. He's never called plays. He's never been a coordinator. It doesn't mean he's not deserving or he doesn't have that potential. But I think it's telling that he not only got passed over last year by Bill Belichick, but unofficially in 2022, when he was sitting there waiting, longest tendered offensive assistant, again, someone I think is a good, good coach, and Bill passed him over from Matt Patricia and Joe Judge, and we all know that was a mistake. So I just, I'm curious about that aspect, because if you're the Patriots, I think you want someone with coordinator experience or experience coaching quarterbacks. Nick doesn't have either, but he also, as you alluded to, might be able to split the difference between, we'll keep the good stuff that we used to do, but evolve it, modernize it with the Ram stuff, which oddly enough, what Nick did for Sean McVay last year when they went away from all this outside zone traditional boot stuff and became much more of a duo power running team out there and went from a bottom 10 scoring offense to top 10 this year. New customers join today and you get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. 
Just visit FanDuel.com slash Boston to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And he's got a unique perspective, too, especially one working under McVay. They kind of followed similar career paths where they were assistants, tight ends coaches for a while under brilliant offensive minds. Obviously, I do not want to try to insinuate that Kaylee is going to become the next Sean McVay. But again, with the value of a tight ends coach, you know, Zach Robinson would have been a great hire, obviously. Pass game coordinator, which is really just right below offensive coordinator in a lot of ways, and quarterbacks coach. If you're going to bring in a rookie quarterback, you'd like to have that dynamic. But Kaylee worked in both the pass game and the run game, which, again, is a unique perspective. You don't always get on the offense side of the ball if you're coaching receivers or you're coaching quarterbacks. And then when you talk about the McVay system, one of the biggest staples is making pass look like run and vice versa, where you really don't know what's happening. And then a big part of that is motion and understanding what's the idea behind it. You, you know, motion is great. It's, it's really nice if you're top 10 in the league when it comes to those ratings and everything, but what's the purpose of it? And can you use it to sequence plays and do that efficiently? So I'm really interested to see if he does get the opportunity, how he's able to take the knowledge he got from that tight ends role and then incorporate it and say, okay, we are going to have a vision and I understand how we're going to be able to build these concepts on top of each other. There's obviously always going to be the road bumps where in your first year of play caller, you don't know what you don't know. It's the same thing with Gerard Mayo, but they've also alluded to the fact that Josh McDaniels or someone else, not necessarily McDaniels, but someone else could come on as a senior offensive advisor. So if you have anything to add on to that, please. And as well, is there anybody that you think would fit in that senior advisor role? Yeah, it's a really good question because I think, too, the other part of this is, you know, not who would necessarily be above and not in terms of power, but title, senior advisor, right. who's someone older who's looking over the whole operation. Who's going to be underneath Nick Cayley if he gets hired? Because if you're Nick Cayley, let's say the job even gets offered to you, there are things you need to consider, one of which is salary. And I am not aboard this train at the caboose. I'm not near the conductor of people think the crafts are cheap and that's really a big issue. They are dead last in as far as cash spending on the roster. But coaching, let's see this play out when they need to hire a candidate pool. If people keep turning them down, to me, that might be a red flag, but I'm not there yet. So there's the salary part. The second part would be, who does he get to hire? And does he get to hire anyone? Or is this going to be a case when Bill O'Brien came in and Bill says, you get one hire, that's it, and you have to deal with a staff that I already have in place who come from different backgrounds and philosophies and levels of experience? Or does Nick get to take the Ram staff with him? Because if I'm him installing a new system, which will require teaching and buy-in and problem solving early on, I want guys who have been in Los Angeles longer than I have and who are generally under me. I don't know the answers to those questions. Nick might be finding out right now if they offer him at the end of a second interview, which is supposedly wrapping up today. So that's where my question is. And that then would in turn answer your question of who's the senior advisor. And I want to say like, because I brought this up on my podcast and wrote about it last Wednesday. And I don't want to say I had buyer's remorse saying, hey, blind resume test, Josh McDaniel should be the favorite here, right? Like, him, right. Kaylee, and Zach Robinson. He's developed quarterbacks, been a coordinator, wants to be in New England. Um, I got some pushback internally from the league about that pretty quickly. But I would just say this. If he's willing to take a back seat, like we talked about with Steve Belichick, mm -hmm. it's hard to argue against just that resume part. The resume is everything. Old dynamics mm -hmm. are hard to let go of and evolve and go with. And Drive might want nothing to do with Josh McDaniels. But I think the salary part and who coaches under Kaylee, if he indeed is hired, is really key because – if he doesn't get enough power and or money, he just might say no. And you mentioned him filling out his staff. There's also the question of, is he going to be able to get those guys? One, you got to right. pry them away from a Rams team that really looks like they're getting it together with a lot of young players. So the development's there. You're kind of in where we can keep this thing going and be even better next year. But also you got to compete with Atlanta now. They got Raheem Morris. They got Zach Robinson. It's going to be tough to sell New England. Like you mentioned, if they're not willing to shell out the cash, that's going to be a really, really tough one. Even if you say, hey, we've got a top three pick. We've got all this money. Like, I'm looking at free agency right now, and I'm thinking, uh, like, last night I tweeted, I'll admit, that was it was a little bit of the um, the uh, high noons got to me, where I was like, throw a bag at Saquon Barkley. But in all <laughs> seriousness, you look at the offensive weapons available, and you start thinking, all right, a lot of these guys are probably going to get franchise tag. So who really are you going to bring in in terms of a veteran playmaker who, at least at that point, you can go into the draft and say, all right, we've got a solid stable of guys that we really trust. So it's going to be interesting.